Welcome back to Extreme Heat Advisory. I got into Japanese music years ago, like when I was still in high school. And when I first started exploring all the music Japan has to offer, there were a couple albums that really stood out to me and that pushed my interest in Japanese music forwards. And we're talking about one of those albums today, The Secret Life of Videotape Music by Videotape Music. I found out about this thing in like sophomore year of high school. And you know, that's a time when you're still really trying to figure out what kind of music you like. Over time, some of my favorite albums from then have fallen out of any sort of actual play. And yet I still regularly listen to the secret life of videotape music. It's a record that never really gets old for me. And one of the biggest things that this album has going for it is its collaborative spirit. Videotape music is just a producer. He doesn't sing at all. So to provide vocals for this album, he's enlisted the help of nine singers from all over Asia. He's got a variety of singers from Japan, including more noteworthy names like Yuta Orisaka and Shohei Takagi of Seiro. There's some Korean on Ilmo, courtesy of Kim Naun, and Mellow Fellow from the Philippines tells an English love story on Cocktail Moon. But it's not just about the vocals. Videotape music shows out as a producer, elevating all of these singers and blending them masterfully into the patchwork of this album. It flows well, and all of these tracks go together seamlessly despite the pretty wide variety of vocals and vocal styles. Videotape music is consistently going for a tropical, loungy kind of vibe on this record, but that's achieved in a lot of different ways. There's plenty of low tempo and more sparse pop songs on this record. Take a track like Ilmol, where every note feels deliberate. Videotape music achieves a dreamy effect using just some stilted percussion and spacey synths. But there's also faster tracks on this album, like the nighttime vibe Cocktail Moon. That one deploys a comparatively busy instrumental, which uses Mellow Fellow's voice to tie together a very upbeat and groovy track. Another really prominent thing about this album is its use of samples and of repetition. Videotape Music is an expert at pulling from various sources and working these sounds into the fabric of the album in really authentic ways. Take Faster Than The Sun, which is built entirely around a two and a half second clip of an escalating synth. In the hands of other producers, a track like that could get annoying pretty fast. But videotape music complements it with excellent percussion and a poetry reading courtesy of Suta Kabea of the hardcore rock band Odd Eyes. And that's not a new thing here. Videotape music has always used a lot of samples, stretching all the way back to the vaporwave style music that he started his career with. Yeah, this dude kinda came out of the vaporwave scene. And if you go back and listen to some of his earlier stuff, like Seven Nights, Eight Days, you can see how that style developed in to the one present on The Secret Life of Videotape Music. I mean, that style is more prominent with some of his other albums, like On the Air or Nights of the World, but that reverb-covered, VHS-inspired pop has definitely carried through onto the album that we're talking about. And it rears its head most prominently on songs like Ilmo and The Six Track, which, by the way, also prominently features a poetry reading, second one of those on the album. And these samples and the VHS tape aesthetic don't just end on the record, they actually extend off it into the music videos and the artwork, which I feel like I've got to mention, because videotape music actually does a good bit of music video and artwork for other artists. You can see his vibe in the video for my favorite track on the album, Summer We Know. You're introduced to it through these old instrumental clips of the samples being used on the song, and as the song builds up to the final climax, you get a found footage style flash through of some VHS visuals. And also, Summer We Know is just a great song on its own. Vocalist M, MMM, 3M, I don't know, but she has my favorite performance on this album. Her vocals on this track are downright beautiful. Summer We Know is also the last track on the album, but it ends it on a very high and bittersweet note, blaring that horn sample from the start of the song in a whole new context as it swirls around high-pitched percussion. It's addictive, it's full of life, it's honestly one of my favorite Japanese pop songs in general, and it's something I would recommend to anyone because I think it's got really wide appeal. Speaking of really wide appeal, this whole album does. This is something I recommend to a lot of people because I think pretty much everyone can find something they like on it. And it's constructed in such an elegant way that it's hard to find fault with a lot of the production here. I mean, there are a couple duds. The second track and the fifth one are just a bit iffy and overly long, but that's made up for by basically the entire second half of the album being incredible. And while I'll never listen to those songs outside of the context of the album, I think they do still provide a worthwhile piece of the whole picture. Because this album is a really good 
picture. It's not one that I think is going to jump out at you and grab your ears and force you into it, but it's one that has a lot to show. And honestly, the more you pay attention to a lot of these songs, the more you'll be rewarded. It's fine as a background listen, but if you're willing to like close your eyes and actively listen to it, it really only gets better. Like the song Stork featuring Yuta Orisaka. It's one that I wasn't immediately into back in high school, but as I've paid more attention to this album and continued to listen to it, I've come to love it. It's a special track, it's honestly probably the second best one on the album. And as you can tell from tracks like that, this album alone pretty much cements videotape music as a master producer. I've touched on it a bit, but these songs are immaculate. Like take the intro, which is working processed vocals taken from multiple different sources into a prominent bass line and a frantic groove. It's a bit of a mission statement, an immediate example of the effortlessly smooth and fun style that this album has. And it's also a great lead into the expansion of that sound that comes later on the record. Because just like the intro, every track on this album feels very deliberate. There's very rarely a note out of place. And that's super impressive on its own, but especially when you're weaving in all these different sounds and samples and motifs. It's a testament to his skill as a musician that this album comes out as cohesive and as polished as it does. It makes it a really special and a pretty unique experience, and one that draws me back time and time again. The Secret Life of Videotape Music is the work of an expert producer truly coming into his own and making an album that at least I regard as a classic. Check it out, it's awesome. That's why I'm making this video. Thanks for watching, uh, I've been a bit busy recently, but uh, hopefully that won't be the case anymore and I can actually make videos again. Love y'all. Ooh, that was loud. Love y'all, thanks for watching, bye.